On today's program, I have a synthetic chemist, Dr. Ed Nealon from Canada. G'day, mate. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much, John. Okay, now, what's exactly a synthetic chemist do? Synthetic chemists? Well, we make medicines and polymers and plastics and dynamite. So you glue molecules together to try and make money? Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> okay, now, Ed, our subject today deals with life and time. Mm. Because, you see, I do lots of work in universities and colleges and even high schools and their textbooks are full of the theory of evolution, but almost every one of them starts with a thing called Miller's amino acid experiment in which these amino acids, which are part of protein, somehow got together by themselves and you and I are the end result. Now, you're someone who professionally has to put molecules together. Mm -hmm. What's your honest opinion as a researcher on this thesis of molecules gluing themselves together. I just wish it were true, John, because it would make my life so much easier. <laughs> but More profit, eh? less time. Well, yeah, let me give you an example. As a chemist, I try to put together a medicine. It may take me two or three years of supervising graduate students, thinking about ideas. Now, this is not just theory. You've actually done this. This is how you earn your living. Absolutely. This is my bread and butter. This is what I was trained in. And it takes a long time. It takes exacting conditions and right molarities and concentrations and purification techniques. And molecules just don't come together nicely to build complex structures. That's just, why we pay a lot for your drugs. That's what you do. Aha. Uh -huh. It's not the chemicals, it's the time, mm. the effort, the intelligence. Yes. Okay, but Miller's amino acid experiment, because I learned it at school, and I've still noted it in present day textbooks, says these molecules got together by themselves and given long enough they became more and more sophisticated until Dr. Ed Nealand is the result. Well, that's a nice story, John. Uh, but the reality of it is if you put together chemicals, let's say some ammonia and some water and, and whatever you've got, cyanide, you can mix all sorts of things together. It's true that if you heat them or give them an energy source, you'll get them to react. I mean, that's how I make my money. But they don't react to create the molecules that make up the cell. There are a lot of problems. You get oftentimes intractable tars, you get wonderful mixtures of compounds which will not selectively react with each other to make the things that we need to make life. But the textbooks say these amino acids hook together to make proteins <laughs> and proteins somehow end up as frogs and fishes and birds and dinosaurs and people. From a chemist's perspective, you've just said this is not what happens, but when you are actually dealing with this experiment, what does happen? What does happen is the amino acids do link up, and you will get proteins, but the wrong types. You'll get, you'll get mixtures of handed molecules coming together. What do you mean by handed molecules? It turns out that life is either one mirror image or the other when it comes to making molecules. You mean like when I look in the mirror, I see myself, but I'm actually backwards? Yes. Or think of your hands. You could think of molecules. Have you ever noticed how your hands are not the same hand? Mm -hmm. So you've got a left and a right hand. Try putting your left hand in a right glove. It's not right. It feels wrong. And molecules are the same way. Now it turns out that when you make molecules of life, they're all the L amino acids, let's say the left hand, and there are no R or right amino acids that come along with it. And so this is very important because Miller's experiment, even though it did generate some amino acids, not all of them, by the way, uh, they made mixtures of both handedness, both hands well, of these why, compounds. Why would that matter? Oh, it makes a big difference because when you're putting amino acids together to make proteins, it's got to be all one mirror image to make that protein. If even one right-handed or, or the other enantiomer molecule gets in there, that's the end of your protein. It will not function as it's supposed to. You mean it won't hook up in the right way? It won't do its job because life depends on proteins, which are enzymes. And they're very finely crafted, beautiful compounds that have clefts in them. And you don't get the right shaped clefts if you don't get the right handed molecules making up the protein. You mean it's like a lock and key sort of very thing? Very much so. And you get the wrong lock for the wrong key if you start mixing together these mirror molecules. But surely the textbooks say given long enough, you could end up with the right ones, or in this case, the left ones. <laughs> no, no, it's just the exact opposite. What happens is, even if you happen to make, let's say, one mirror image molecule, if you give it enough time, it'll turn into a mixture of both mirror image molecules over time. They, what's called racemize. And so time is not the hero of the plot here. 
And what's worse is the longer you leave chemicals, the more they react together, the more, the more they start making tars and polymers, which are completely useless. So what's useless. actually a tar? Because I've seen it on the road, but what, what do you mean as a chemist by a tar? Think of a tar as lots and lots of molecules bonding together, bonding together, bonding together. Then they continue to bond until they become very large, large molecules. These are what tars are. They're polymers. So that's why the road surface sticks together. That's right. Aha. Never knew that. Thank you, Dr. Ed. <laughs> Well, listening, you've been listening to Dr. Ed Nealand. He's a synthetic chemist, and our subject today is where does life come from, how do the molecules work, and the big issue of time. Now, Ed, we continue to read in the textbook.